Hello there guys, I'm the C-H-A-L-L and welcome back to another video. Now today we have your Premier League predictions between the 22nd and the 25th of June. Now before this video you've seen two videos go up, we've got the reviews from the games that we haven't reviewed officially yet and uh, the reviews from yesterday, but also we've got this predictions video today. So we're going to be predicting the Premier League fixtures from the 22nd to the 25th of June because then of course there's a day break on the 26th uh, on the Friday for the Championship fixture Brentford West. West Brom, which I'll be staying tuned to. Very excited. I may actually do a review of that as well, so comment down below if you want that as well. But between the 22nd and the 25th, and then of course, again, another prediction video, which will be released on the Friday for the 27th of June up to whenever I decide to do them. And of course, that's the day before my birthday, so it's going to be a very special video. Uh, but for now, guys, please see a like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. We're, half, we're over halfway to 100 subs on this channel, so uh, I've put my coast channel. Uh, channel in the description down below as well, so make sure you go check that channel out. Uh, and for now, guys, let's predict some Premier League scores. So starting off then uh, with uh, today, uh, the 22nd of June, uh, 2020, and of course it's 8 o'clock kickoff, Manchester City against Burnley. I believe if Man City lose or draw against Burnley, then Liverpool just have to win against Crystal Palace in a couple of days' time uh, to win the title. So... Obviously, Man City, Burnley, that's the score to watch today, 8 o'clock, 22nd of June. Um... That's a big one. That's a big one. Like I said, repercussions for Liverpool winning the title. If City lose or draw against a very compact defensive Burnley, uh, then Liverpool win the title if they beat Palace uh, in a couple of days afterwards. Uh, and like I said, Burnley are going to be a hard side to face to try and get the win because, of course, Burnley are very good in their defence uh, when they can. Um, you know, they're not one of those that's going to fully attack teams and break them down. Um, they're very compact in their defensive, kind of like Roy Hodgson, Crystal Palace. Uh, they're very, very well shaped in their defence. It's hard to break them down sometimes. So, you know, they're going to be a hard side to beat. But I think City will overcome this. And I'm going to predict a 2-1 win for City. If I get it wrong, my God, I'm going to look like an absolute fool. An idiot. Uh, <laughs> so let's move on to our next fixtures on the 23rd of June. Uh, on the Tuesday tomorrow. Uh, and that is of course at 6 o'clock and quarter past 8. Leicester Brighton at 6 o'clock. Of course Leicester held Watford to a 1-1 draw at Vicarage Row. While Brighton uh, beat Arsenal 2-1 at the Amex. And of course like I said I'll speak about Arsenal in a separate video. About who should go, who should stay, who should they sign. Uh, and I'm going to speak about how I would run Arsenal Football Club. Uh Take some lessons, Cronky. Take some lessons. Uh, <laughs> but this game against uh, between Leicester and Brighton is literally a top versus bottom clash. Brighton, of course, one of the outsiders, in my opinion, for relegation. It's between West Ham and Bournemouth for me uh, for that last relegation spot. And, uh, of course, Leicester, they're holding on to their third place finish, hopefully, in the champ to get a Champions League place. Um, whether they get higher, if they get second or lower, is you know up to them and, of course, the teams around them. But... I think this is going to be a very hard one. I think Brighton will be up for this after the Arsenal win. So I think we could be looking here at a 2-2 draw. I mean, look at another draw for Leicester. And that means Chelsea could maybe overtake them in the future. Next game then. Uh, at quarter past eight. It's Tottenham West Ham United. Now of course West Ham are in free fall. And if they lose to Tottenham. That could give Bournemouth the upper hand in their game the day after. So... Very exciting. Uh, now, Tottenham, I've said a lot about Tottenham. They play boring, part of the bus football as soon as they score a goal. Uh, but if they scrape the win, they scrape the win. And at the minute, it doesn't matter how you play football. I think the most important thing for all the teams is just getting three points. So it don't matter whether it's part of the bus football after a goal. Spurs, in my opinion, will win the match. I think they're going to win 2-0. I think Bergwijn may potentially get on the score sheet. Maybe Harry Kane gets himself a goal. I mean, uh, it'd be nice to see him back up to some kind of full fitness. Um, but I think Tottenham's going to win this one. I think that will open the door for Bournemouth, who on Wednesday the 24th of June is one of four 6 o'clock kickoffs. Uh, now, the first one is Manchester United, Chef United. Now, Chef United, of course, losing to Newcastle 3 0 uh, means they are going to have to try and bounce back. And, of course, Man U are the, hardest, uh, are the hardest team, in my opinion, to bounce back on. My Manchester United, who I, who I follow along with my childhood club, Doncaster Rovers. Uh, Manchester United, of course, unbeaten in 12 now uh, with that 1 1 draw against Tottenham and Jose Mourinho. Uh, so, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did do good with some of his players. Of course, the mistake by De Gea and Maguire, I can't let go uh, because it was poor absolutely diabolical and you know United stand Mark Goldbridge said it I think if Maguire or Lindelof had a pace centre back next to each other um, maybe Bailly could play or 
dare I say it, Phil Jones, who might have a bit of pace left in him, um, or just get a pace centre-back in the next transfer window. So I think that uh, Man United is going to be a hard team to face for Sheffield United, and I think that Sheffield United may potentially get ahead of themselves. So I think that what we're looking at here, I think Man U will stay unbeaten, but I think Sheffield United won't come away with it without nothing. So I think we're going to predict 2-2 draw between United and Sheffield United. Next up, Newcastle Villa, and I think this game, in my opinion, will pretty much confirm relegation for uh, for Aston Villa. Uh, not mathematically, but I think practically it will be relegation for Aston Villa. Newcastle on the back of that 3-0 win against Sheffield United, I think that Newcastle will be up for this, and I think that all the players... Uh, Carroll, Ritchie, St. Maximin, Almiron, who did well in that game, I think they're going to be up for it again. So I th I'm going to predict a 3 1 victory for Newcastle. I think Villa will score, but I think, again, I think it could be like Chelsea. I think they'll lose their lead by three goals to one. And I think Newcastle will come away with three points. And because, of course, Newcastle, they're already safe. Uh, next up then, Norwich and Everton. And again, I think this will practically, maybe not mathematically, but practically confirm Norwich's relegation. Uh, I'm going to go with a 2-1 Everton win away from home. I think that Norwich won't be up for it. I think one of the main things that's been Norwich's problem this season is having that final third ever since Pukki got injured. Of course, Pukki was scoring goals for fun before he got injured. And then, you know, they haven't had that clinical final third. And I think that's going to come back to haunt them. And I think next season, hopefully, Pukki will be back up to full fitness and full confidence. And they'll have maybe a partner for him next season or they'll have someone to compete with him for that number nine spot um and i think that norwich will hopefully bounce back in the championship but i think this season i think it's too little too late so i'm going to go with a 2-1 win for everton i think that dominic calvert lewin's going to put on another another skill school you know remember that from soccer am uh, <laughs> uh now the final uh, six o'clock kickoff is of course Wolves Bournemouth at the Molyneux. Now I spoke about Bournemouth. I believe uh, that Bournemouth will win this. I, 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 I'm, you may be shocked to hear that, but you know I think Wolves are going to have a decent showing. But I think that Bournemouth will just want it that little bit more because um, West Ham and Bournemouth, they're you know they're on goal difference, you know ahead of each other. Um, they're on the same points total, so you know I think even a point. For, for Bournemouth would be all right, especially if West Ham lose to Tottenham the day before. So I think we're looking here at um, a, a, at least a draw, but I'm thinking Bournemouth could go ahead and win this at the last minute, and I think Bournemouth will win this 2-1, but I think in the last minute. Um, finally then, for the 24th of June, uh, we have the quarter past eight kickoff between Liverpool and Crystal Palace. Of course, if Man City draw or lose to Burnley today, Liverpool will have to beat Palace to win the title and celebrate without any fans at Anfield, which is going to be a bit sad for Liverpool fans, but I'm sure they'll be celebrating wherever, wherever they are. Uh, Liverpool, of course, I you know what? This is a tough one, in my opinion. You're probably thinking on paper, what? This should be a Liverpool walkover. I think it's tough, because on the one hand, Liverpool, after the... 0-0 draw with rivals Everton uh, yesterday. Liverpool will want to storm this. However, I think with Crystal Palace and Roy Hodgson, you know, they've got a squad that's got a very compact defensive shape. They can hold their own well. They can defend very, 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 very well. Even though it was Bournemouth, they still defended well and they scored a lot of goals. So, I think Palace can't be ruled out of this game, in my opinion. And, you know, I saw Milivojevic saying the club can challenge for Europe this season or next season. Because um, Crystal Palace, don't forget, are only like three to five points off of Man United in fifth. So they're not completely out of the race for Europe just yet. Um, I think this is going to be a 2-1 win for Liverpool, in my opinion. But I think Crystal Palace will still show a defensive showing. And I think that Liverpool may not play to 100%, in my opinion. So I think Liverpool may scrape this one. Finally, then, the 25th of June. And you've got Burnley, Watford, Southampton, Arsenal... And Chelsea, Man City. So I think that even if Man City beat Burnley, if Liverpool beat Palace, Chelsea, uh, Chelsea have to beat Man City to give Liverpool the title without them playing. Kind of like Leicester when they won the league. Chelsea have got to help them. Chelsea have got to help another potential champion. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's start first off with our 6 o'clock kickoff. So starting off, Burnley-Watford. Of course, obviously Burnley will have either drawn, lost or beat Man City by this point. Uh, so whatever momentum they will take into it, they'll either carry that momentum forward or they'll have to bounce back from it. But against Watford, it's going to be very, very tough because Nigel Persons come in and absolutely stormed this league. Beating Liverpool 3-0 uh, just before the lockdown. 
Uh, and of course, that 1 1 draw against Champions League chasing Leicester. You know, Watford are showing signs that they can survive and do wonders under Nigel Persons. So, you know, I really think for Watford's sake, I hope they don't get rid of Person at the end of the season because I think he's there to do a lot more than just keep them up. I think they can do a lot more than that under Person, especially with what I've seen. Uh, in the second half of the season, ever since Kike Sanchez Flores left the club for a second time. Um, so, for this scoreline, I'm going to predict uh, a 2 1 win for Watford. I think Burnley won't bounce back from this, whatever kind of momentum they're taking from the City game. Southampton Arsenal. Now, I think 10 15 years ago, you'd probably predicted a 3 4 0 win for Arsenal. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to predict a 2 0 win for Southampton. Now, you're probably thinking, why? Have you been living under a rock? Arsenal are in meltdown. And you know what? Arteta got his substitutions wrong last week. But I don't blame Arteta fully. I blame him for the crap that the board has given him to work with. And I think, again, the team won't be up for it. I've got a feeling Lacazette will not be on form. I've got a feeling Saka will be one of their better players again. I've got a feeling that he'll make the wrong starting 11 I think Kolasinac could possibly start ahead of Tierney you know obviously David Luiz is still I think he's still suspended I'm not sure if it's a one or a two game ban yet so I'm not sure if David Luiz is still suspended if he's not I've got a feeling they may put him on the bench and he may be forced his hand again of course Leno's injured so Martinez has got to play maybe I've got now I don't want to say this but I've got a horrible feeling that one of the goals that Southampton scores will be Martinez's fault and I think it's because Leno got injured in the Brighton game so uh, by that you know, that little, that little evil weasel scoundrel, Neil Morpé. Uh, <laughs> uh, which is, I think Neil Morpé, just as much as Troy Deeney's kahunas, uh, will be an enemy of Arsenal fans for years to come. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure Arsenal has the kahunas to go ahead of Southampton. So I think we're going to have a 2-0 win for Southampton here. I hope I'm not right, uh, right for Arsenal's sake, but I've got a feeling I might be, or, or close. Uh, finally then, Chelsea Man City at quarter past eight on the 25th of June. So this scoreline, again, is a very interesting one because, of course, Chelsea, they're keeping their Champions League place. Man City, even though they're banned for two years, they've got to stay in touch with Liverpool. And, of course, any slip-ups now, Liverpool have won it already. Uh, so for this game, I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw. I think that Chelsea will have the edge over City, but I think City may scrape it at the end. So there we go. So that is your predictions from the 22nd to the 25th of June 2020. Very, very exciting. Um, I'm very, very excited to uh, to see these games come ahead. Of course, like I said, uh, tonight we've got Man City Burnley at 8 o'clock. We've got the uh, second legs of the playoffs to come tonight as well, just before then. Or I think one kicks off at the same time as Man City Burnley. So that's going to be very, very interesting. So tomorrow you're going to see a video uh, about both legs and we're going to try and give the playoff final a good prediction uh, even though I gave you my predictions in the playoffs uh, but I, I may, to be fair I may not actually predict the playoff final I may just you know leave that and just keep my predictions to see if I get it right so um, thank you very much guys for watching this video make sure you stay tuned throughout the week for more videos uh, but for now guys make sure you like comment subscribe cut the okay spell see next YouTube video Make sure you go subscribe to Coaster Channel in the description down below. That channel is approaching 2,000 subscribers, so make sure you get subscribing. And for now, guys, I'm the C-H-A-L-L. Goodbye. Goodbye!